I've had this garden for about 10 years. I'm in a rental. There wasn't meant much garden here at all. There's only like one meter square of open garden soil there. So actually this garden is about taking a whole lot of little nothings of space and turning them into somethings. And what we've actually got here is, even though it's probably nine square meters out the back, we've got a whole lot of other plants and gardens in different spots. Not only in private land, but also on public land and then in a laneway. And then we've got pots everywhere. So it actually all connects up to be about 35 square metres of gorgeous habitat gardens. My favourite feature of the garden is actually the movement of the critters around the plants. It is one of my all-time favourite things, not only to go out by myself, but to go out with my daughter, who's just turned six. And we just look for critters. And of course, that's not only insects. And it's not only pollinating insects and the predators, but also the birds and also the lizards and the reptiles that we have. So it's absolutely glorious. We have so much living in this spot with us. I actually started some of the street gardens here for honeybees. And then as I learned more about honeybees, I learned that they were okay. It's actually our native things that needed a lot of help. And through that, you start looking at how they're connected to the birds and how bringing the insects in brings the birds in. And that has been the most beautiful journey. And to be able to have a white-browed scrub wren in the middle of South Melbourne in a tiny backyard where you're not really known for getting over fences and getting in and coming in with thornbills it's just so special. So the garden has been this evolution of not only different plants, different planting styles, but also it's been, it mirrors my journey around learning about biodiversity. We had a very lovely courtyard and I filled it with plants. It all looked really lovely and very neat. And as I learned more through my street gardening about biodiversity, I actually really changed how I planted, what I planted, what was important in the planting. I learned that to have biodiversity, you have to have diversity. So in this garden, we have a lot of different types of vegetation, from mulch, from ground cover, to understory, which is the wildflowers. I have a lot of wildflowers in pots everywhere. Then we've got mid-story, so we're looking at acacias, um, and that leads to the canopy. Apart from that, the vegetation, we've also got bird baths. We have three bird baths, different depths, actually. And also we've got logs. We've got logs at various stages of decay. You pull one of those up and you've got so many critters in there. So if you're a beginner to gardening and you really want to help the birds in your area, there are a couple of things that I will, I will suggest from my own experience. The first one is to remember that birds love diversity. So change things up in your backyard as much as you possibly can. And also remember to embrace messiness. If you can have some areas of your garden, even no matter how small, that you actually leave. You know, if a plant dies and there are some sticks there, leave the sticks. We've done that out the back and so many birds over the years have been taking those sticks. In fact, a pair of crows actually came in last um, a few months back and they were building their nest out of the sticks. The next one is just remember that you are nature. You're not above nature, you're not below nature. You are part of the ecosystem. So enjoy that.
If you're enjoying this video series, click the link below to watch BirdLife's Habitat Gardening course.